Well, let's just quickly check in before we get into the Kenyan markets and what the shilling has been doing uh, for the day, sitting at 84.75 against the US dollar. Uh, you're looking at slight dollar strength, but uh, pretty much stable as we start out the trading week. Let's delve into what's uh, driving the local markets. And as I say, Kennel Coble just releasing its results, but uh, also some news there from the retail front from Nakamat Holdings in terms of their ambitions. Uh, we're crossing to our Nairobi studios now where we've got uh, our market watcher for the day, Anthony Kamani, research analyst at Genghis Capital, standing by. Anthony, uh, thanks for joining us. So I suppose let's just uh, very quickly take a look at what the market has done for the day. It starts on the back foot, uh, but what are your expectations when it comes to market activity? And of course, we've seen so much buying into the market post the decision by the Supreme Court, and it seems there is so much optimism, but a slight pullback today. So what are you expecting this week? Well, we are still expecting that the same trend will continue, but we are sort of thinking that the market will range a bit. I mean, we are seeing a lot more buying than we are seeing selling, but the kind of the dampening mood that you saw today is probably because of profit taken by some market participants. And there's been a lot of talk going around about the market and some investors fearing that it's a little bit too overvalued at the current moment. Mm -hmm. But we're optimistic. We are thinking that there are still more buyers coming in than there are sellers. So we're expecting the market will range in the coming weeks or so. Mm -hmm. Let's, let's look to uh, some of the stocks that uh, have been in focus because uh, the first one, I suppose, has been Kennel Coble in the, in the uh, oil marketing space and Total releasing their results. Uh, we saw that loss coming through for, for Kennel Coble and basically saying a disappointing set of numbers. They've been hit by uh, hedging on the, on, on, on the one front. They've also been hit by that 66% increase in interest expenses. Was it the market position for, for this loss that they reported 4, point, uh, 4 shillings 27 cents? Um, I think the market had factored this in. You remember the Puma deal that did not take and so investors sort of took a negative stance on that counter from then and what we are seeing actually in the pricing now is sort of all that negative sentiment being reflected on the stock. Mm -hmm. I'll also remind you that they had actually released a profit warning and so I wouldn't say it has come as such a shock to the market. Mm -hmm. and we, as, as far as Kenol Kobil is concerned, I'd still say that they operate in a very tough uh, environment in terms of the fact, in, in the fact that power prices, I mean, sorry, uh, oil prices in Kenya are actually very heavily regulated by the government. So mm -hmm. on that one front, that the, the environment was actually tough in that regard. But they also suffered a few hedging losses, which, which also didn't, didn't argue well with some of their, with some in terms of their numbers. Because if you look at a company like Total Kenya, which does not hedge too much, its losses were sort of minimal, and it would have actually reported a profit, mm -hmm. were it not actually for the litigation that's going on. Yeah. So, yeah. So that I mean, that's you know, if you talk about uh, some hedging losses, I mean, they're basically saying the most significant uh, impact on their earnings came as a result of a bad hedging policy or hedging policy gone wrong. Uh, they made uh, realized foreign exchange losses of 4.6 billion shillings uh, during the year. So, so how would you you rate? I suppose that's in the past now, and I suppose one might hope that they make uh, decisions going forward uh, that perhaps uh, removes, this, uh, uh, removes this element uh, that they could be vulnerable to, to experience losses like this in the future. But do you think that they should uh, do away with hedging altogether? Um, I don't think so, because hedging has also worked well for them in the past. Like last, the last two years, it's actually worked to their favor. Um, it's only this year that they've actually come up with losses. So I would say that they should probably, as they become more experienced at it, we'll probably see much more stronger earnings going forward. But in terms of core business and key operating activities, I wouldn't say that they are so badly off. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, just looking at their, their full year, sales volumes down 21%, turnover down uh, 13%. Um, they're reporting lower sales in their African trading desk and the aviation in the second half of the of 2012 and they've only managed to to offset this as a result of high volumes in their subsidiaries uh, so that concerning that those two parts the trading desk and specifically the aviation part of their business ha have performed weekly are you concerned about that 
Um, yes, I am, because you see what has been happening is there are, there are more downstream activities have actually been hindered by much smaller players who are coming in and sort of winning these contracts in terms of supplying energy generating diesel or those who are supplying oil to aeroplane company. Uh, airlines and such. So the, te the competition has become much more stiffer in that end. But I'm still optimistic that their business in terms of their small retail consumer, um, that business is still intact. And it's only them and Total Kenya who are actually competing in that space. Mm -hmm. And I can't discount the room for growth in that business. So I still think that they have a, a few good years ahead and all this negative sentiment that is actually out there has actually been factored into the price as it is. So yep. I, wouldn't say, um, I wouldn't say that I'm as bearish as the market seems. I'm a little bit optimistic about the future. Let's, let's look at the retail space now because Nakumat Holdings, uh, which is of course the biggest retail chain in East Africa by number of outlets, and I certainly was impressed uh, by them when I was in, in Tanzania. Are they looking to raise $50 million? That's to finance expansion. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on the competition that uh, Nakumat and the run for its money that Nakumat is giving? giving Utumi supermarkets, which of course is listed? Well, you see, the thing that has actually worked for Nakumat, you, if you recall, it's actually been a much, it's actually began as a much smaller chain as opposed to Utumi. But because of the fact that it's a private company and with reduced red tape or bureaucracies, what you see happening is that they're actually able to execute some of these expansion plans much more quickly than Uchumi, for example, because Uchumi is a company that would have to go through some shareholder regulations. It's, I, there are so many things that shareholders need to agree on before certain moves are made. But as you can see for Nakumat, it's something that they would do pretty quickly mm -hmm. and expand much faster than Uchumi would. So yeah, so that's the thing that they, they actually have that is going for them that Uchumi doesn't.